All right, guys, I'm just getting a little stir crazy at home, so I decided to come on out here and uh, <coughs> try my hand at some fishing. So uh, I'll give you a quick look at this little bay here that we're in. Uh, it's kind of a weird spot. I'll show you why in a minute. But um, we're going to be using this uh, this fake uh, paddle tail perch here. And uh, around here I've caught a really nice walleye and a really nice pike on one of these. So we're going to give it another try see what we can do. But uh, first I'll give you a quick look. We had a nice fish on. Pretty sure it was a nice size walleye. I felt a lot of head shakes, but it bit me off. All right. Let's bait it back up again. <laughs> Give it a try. <laughs> my, heart's, my heart's a little broken. Gotta tell you. Well. We got that one hit, and uh, and then no other takers after that. Uh, I wish I would have had a few more of those, uh, a few more of those um, those lures, those uh, perch paddle tails. I'm just coming out to cast a few lures, and hopefully, uh, you know, hook up onto one last fish before uh, I have that dead time of that month or two where we got to wait for the uh, for the river to freeze. Uh, in about uh, four weeks or so, uh, we will be heading. I will be heading out uh, to do some ice fishing, uh, but uh, first we got to get ready. We're gonna head on back to my place and uh, we're gonna set up some gear. Uh, we do have, um, ice fishing season is only about a month away. So once uh, this all this freezes up here, well not this location, but uh, somewhere pretty close by, once that all freezes up, we're gonna be able to uh, go out on the ice and catch some fish. Now, I don't know if you've seen that video, uh, there's monsters down here, but uh, you should check it out. You'll, you'll see, I'll put the link right here. Um, but when you see the, see the two giant muskie that my buddy Jesse pulled out of the water out of a place where I've been fishing many times um, I decided to change up my uh, my, my my gear a little bit uh, I used to fish with these um, with these tip-ups uh, I'll post a link so you can see what, how they work and how they're in action um, or tip downs actually uh, it's very primitive style of fishing and I love fishing that way for panfish uh, but uh, I am gonna go a little more high-tech this year uh, I'm gonna have a, uh, a Markham showdown to show you uh, not today I'll do that in a separate video but uh, I've got some flags that we're gonna set up today uh, get them ready for um, for ice fishing season so we're gonna head on back to my house and uh, I've got my stuff at home so we'll set those up get the gear ready for uh, for spring and I'll show you how uh, how we set up our flags for um, for musky and pike all right guys so right here in front of me I've got the green bucket of doom this is the the, uh, the bucket that does everything for me while I'm on the ice it acts as my chair, it acts as my fish bucket, it acts as a place to store my, my tackle, all kinds of things. Uh, it's even been used as the toilet once or twice, but we won't even get into that. But so right here we have a Berkeley tip up. Uh, this is what I was using before. Right here, I've got my, probably my favorite ice fishing tool I own. It's my Fenric Elite Tech uh, Ice, a medium, action, a medium light action uh, jigging rod with a quantum optics uh, ultralight reel. I have the uh, Celsius uh, flags. These are a round design, which cover the whole hole. They are 10 inches from edge to edge. And I'll tell you why I like these ones better than the other design, but we'll get into that later. We have quantum 80 pound, uh, sorry. We have a uh, high seas quattro, 100% low carbon uh, liter material at 80 pounds. 
uh, 80 pound test. We have our squid line, which is, or, uh, or your ice, or your tip-up line, which is called uh, at 25 uh, pounds. We have our pike, our pike rigs that we use one aught um, treble hooks. Uh, anything more than that, really, then you're fishing for jaws, and uh, it's kind of crazy. But uh, I use one aught hooks, and they work just fine for me. Then we have our terminal tackle. We've got some swivels, and we got some uh, uh, swivel snaps. And I'll show you what we need to do with those in a little bit later. Well, all right. So let's open up one of our packages here, and we're going to. Uh, Put some of our squid line onto onto our spools down here. We'll get these all set up. Uh, each one of these spools I have in my hand are uh, are 20, uh, it's 25 pounds at 50 yards. So we'll put as much as we can on here. Uh, if it all fits, it'll all go on. Uh, I do have um, uh, two more of these coming, so I'll do those at a later date. But I'm going to show you how I set these guys up. Well, all right. So we'll go ahead and uh, and flip this guy over. Take a look at the bottom. So, I'll give you a quick look at the spool. So basically what we want to do is we want to take our, um, our line, pass it through here, and then tie it to one of these little holes. So I don't know if you can see those there. See that hole there? We're going to tie it to one of those holes. So let's go ahead and do that. And basically all I'm going to do is tie a, a simple uh, slip knot, and then once it's... Um, once, uh, once I've got it on there nice and tight, I'll do an extra little security knot, which is why I'm going to keep the tag end a little extra longer. We'll even uh, double that up right away. Give it a good pull. It feels nice and tight. That's pretty good. There we go. So you guys don't need to see me sit here twisting this thing around, so I'll, uh, I'll come back when it's done and give you a look at it, okay? All right, so we're just about to the end. Took just about the whole 50 yards. So we got about two or three feet left over. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass that, uh, that back through the loop again because I, I took it off to fill it up. So we'll drop that on down here. Hopefully it doesn't unspool anymore on me and I'll show you the few knots that I, I do to set this stuff up. So to tie the Palomar knot, you'll basically make a bite in your line so there's a loop. Pinch it nice and close so you can pass it through one of these one of these loops. Once you've got it passed through, it can be a little difficult. Sometimes to be easier, you can pass the tag end through once, loop it around your figure and pass it back through again so you have your your bite, but it'll work out both both ways. So now we've got our Swivel nice and free. I'm going to switch hands here, switch sides. So now that you've got your swivel nice and free, you're going to want to make an overhand knot with the bite. So see, just a simple, a simple overhand knot. We don't need that much loop. So we're going to slide it down a little bit. Now we're left with our overhand knot with a loop sticking out. Now you want to grab your, your swivel and pass it through the loop. See that? So it's through the loop and then start to tighten up your knot. You're gonna, it's going to take a little work with this line because it doesn't slide easily like fishing line does. But once you get it all snug down, this makes an extremely durable not slippy knot at all so I don't know if you can see that up close but basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna have two lines that are in the loop of your swivel instead of one it makes it far more more durable and it will not slip it will not come undone I've never had one of these knots fail me before so um, I think what I'm gonna do is I want to go grab some power uh, power cord and I'm gonna do it one more time on something larger so you could see better all right, so we're gonna pretend this is our, uh, our swivel or our lure or whatever. Um, so here's our fishing line. You're gonna to wanna to make a bite. Pass that through your hole. So now you have your, your line and your, um, 
and your swivel kind of freely sliding back and forth between the two lines. You'll do an overhand knot. In this case, we'll have to make our loop a little bigger to fit our carabiner. So you can see we've got a simple overhand knot and we're going to pass the carabiner through the loop so when you pull it tight it does require some work with this there we go when you pull it tight you'll see I won't tighten it up too much but you've got two cords up against a friction point so that's going to hold that really tight and then your loop wraps around the knot itself and locks it down. Once that it's on something, that never comes undone. It doesn't slip, doesn't move. All right, so, so once you have your knot all snug down, nice and tight, you wanna find your tag end and cut that off. That's it. Now, if you have a lighter handy, you could uh, melt that down so it doesn't fray anymore. You can see that, but that's a sturdy knot. It ain't going nowhere. So let's prepare the, um, the fluorocarbon leader. Tying on the leader material to your, to your, um, to your swivel can be tricky. Uh, it's very difficult to tie this stuff because it's very springy. It wants to go back to where it was uh, and it's gonna argue with you the whole way. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this on and then I'm gonna show you again with the, uh, the cord and the carabiner so you can see what it looks like. But basically, it's a simple slip knot that we're going to do. So I'm going to take my line. I'm going to pass it under. So here's my, my leader material. I'm going to pass it under. Then I'm going to make a loop over. Then another loop over. And I'm going to slide my line through all those loops. I'm going to try to tie the knot up high because what happens is the as you slide it down it tries to um, tie itself over the hook so basically what I've done is is I've tied the loop give you a look at that knot there it's kind of hard to see it but uh, give you a look at that knot it's a slip knot so once you get it down there you can pull it tight on there and it should hold on to it pretty good but it's a very difficult knot to tie if you get too close one of these little loops are going to hook over your thing and then you got to start all over again so i'm going to go ahead and show you what that knot looks like on the carabiner to make it easier for you guys to tie it up so now we're going to demonstrate the slip knot we're going to be using don't know the name of it unfortunately but you pass your line through give yourself a generous tag end you're going to pass that under so your line's going under, and you're going to create your first loop. So there's your first one. You're going to repeat that again, so under the line, and then up over on the other side, there's your second loop. And then you'll do it one more time for the third loop. So you've done that three times now. Now you're going to take your tag end, pass it up through the hole, and pull it up. You're going to cinch it down nice and tight. Tighten up your knot. It may need a little bit of work, but you'll get it. So once your knot's all tight, you slide that down. It's super tight, never coming off, and it won't fail you. So there it is. All right, so now we're going to attach our clip to the leader and uh, and I'll show you what one of these one of these setups looks like. So basically, we're going to go ahead, and I think um, I've never tried a Palomar knot with this kind of uh, line before, but I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a try, see how it works. So I think for this uh, for the sake of this video, it'll be an experiment. Uh, normally, I'd use one of those slip knots again, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the Palomar knot a try and see how that goes. I'll give you a quick look at that. So there's our clip and are not. Now, the good thing about this, if we would have been fishing with this line today, whatever fish it was that had been onto, onto my line, using this as a leader, would have gone, come home with us and we'd be having a, a shore lunch in the kitchen right now.
but didn't work out. So we got our leader, two and a half, two and a half feet about, two and a half feet, three feet is more than enough. Most of the time when you're fishing for these uh, big musky or pike, you're only in four feet of water anyway. So we're going to use Anakin Skywalker here as our, uh, as our model. So when you're beating your fish, first hook goes into his lips, second hook goes into his dorsal fin. You have your wire leaders, little attractants which are going to hang down by the fish. Those lead up to your first snap swivel, or your first snap, which you've, uh, you've tied up with a, um, with a polymer knot. And it looks to be holding really well, so I'm happy with that. Then, your, um, your fluorocarbon leader will attach to your swivel. And then your swivel, and uh, we use a slip knot for that. And then the swivel attached to the other end of the squid line or a tip up line is a, another Palomar knot, very sturdy knot. And then your squid line attached to your tip up with a, um, another slip knot, which worked really well. So that's your setup guys. So typically uh, when you're out fishing for uh, big pike and big muskie, you are gonna wanna have some Anakin Skywalker size bait. So 12, 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches. Bigger the bait, bigger the fish. Now, when you've got a, a pretty small pike swimming by and he sees a minnow, like uh, a thing like that, he's usually not gonna go for it. Uh, some people do use shiners about the size of my Gonzo 720. That's fine. But uh, to catch some big guys like the, um, like the video I linked to this video, uh, you need some big bait. I mean, big bait. Anakin Skywalker size bait is what you need. Uh, I should have to thank Logan for uh, allowing me to use his toys for this video. <laughs> but anyway, that's it guys. That's how I set up my tip-ups. Works great for me and um, hopefully it'll work great for you. So if you can, safely, get out there this year, set up your gear, get ready, hit the ice hard and bring home bunches of big fish. So hopefully you guys will go ahead and check out that video there. The monsters are, uh, the, there's monsters down there. Uh, I'll, I, I'll attach the link. And um, man, we pulled out some, uh, my buddy Jesse pulled out some beauties that day. Two of them. I just showed up with my jigging rod. I was popping perch out of there. And then uh, I had to go over there and give him a hand to uh, take this fish out. I mean, when you see it, it's, uh, it's something special. Anyway, guys, hope you liked the video. Unfortunately, I couldn't bring in a fish for you today, but uh, not always lucky. So stay tuned. Uh, I'll be getting on the ice as soon as Mother Nature gets up there and does her job and uh, freezes things over so we can uh, bring in some monsters. You guys take care. Get out, explore, and uh, hope you like the setup. Now, the one thing I did forget to show you, so before I take off, is that once you got everything all wound up, you drop it in the hole. Take your two hooks and poke them into the um, into the foam here, and you've got everything stored away, and you don't have to worry about getting your hands poked when you stick that inside of your uh, when you stick. Go ahead and stick that inside of your bucket because it does fit.